I am Frank, a game designer of Reggie, and today I'm going to talk about how to build an implicit tutorial according to the player reactions. So, what is an implicit tutorial? Implicit tutorial means uh, teaching the player how to play the game without telling him uh, explicitly how to do that. Uh, you do that uh, through, with no text, you do that uh, through level design and small details in the game. Uh, for example, what we saw earlier today in the first conference about circles, that was all implicit tutorials, right? So I brought an example of a very famous implicit tutorial. <laughs> when Mario reaches the first block, the Goomba is beneath the block. So when Mario tries to jump above the Goomba, he will accidentally hit the block from below and get a coin. He will bounce down and hit the Goomba. He already learned to to hit the blocks from below and the enemies from above. When he applies the lesson to the next block, he gets some mushroom, so that uh, Mario doesn't mistake uh, the mushroom for an enemy. The mushroom bounces back in that pipe and goes back to Mario, forcing him to get it. Yeah, it seems like overanalyzing, like an alpha. It works, and I'm about to prove it. So why does Reggie need implicit tutorial? Uh, well, Reggie works as a very classic platformer with some new mechanics built on top. These mechanics feel very natural when the player gets the hand of them, but until then they are a little bit hard to understand sometimes. But it's also a game that has to be appealing for uh, casual gamers as well as pro gamers, and they need to be able to pick it up and be able to master it. For example, this is the gravity mechanic, which uh, you have to alternate between jumps and gravity switching. Uh, unlike uh, BBBB and other games, you can switch gravity multiple times in the air uh, as long as you keep advancing. But if you spam it, if you do it a lot, you can just see that uh, you lose uh, all your momentum because of the air friction. It's a simple mechanic to use, but a little bit too complicated to get at first. <coughs> The player can also dig to get treasures, like that horse shoe right there, but to hide from enemies. When he hides, he gets the treasure and the enemy goes uh, above him. So, uh, we got the first version of the game. We didn't have a lot of uh, beta testers or people to try it out. Uh, trying to apply some implicit tutorials on it. Then we took it to events. Uh, and in Rome, in the, in the, uh, whatever. Um, and this is what the prototype had. Um, it's a very early one, the graphics are uh, very early by founders, so the game starts with a roof on top, which, it, which is uh, the tree leaves. This is very important uh, to have a roof on top because many players, the first thing that they do is try all the buttons. If they push the gravity button, the character will reverse and he will fall the upper part of the screen. I mean, yeah, the games, the rules of the game reverse when you switch gravity. You lose on top of the screen and you kill the enemies from below. So that's also the very reason that the first level is a forest. We need to begin with a roof. The roof, roof has to feel natural, but it has to be an outdoor level. So in here you can see a few pilots with uh, different uh, altitudes. That's meant uh, for the player to test how the jump works. The higher, the longer the player pushes the button, the, um, the higher the jump is. Okay, this seems really blatant because everyone here has probably played Mario, but since this game is meant to be also for casual gamers who never tried out the platformer, sometimes they get stuck with jumping, and this can also help them understand. In this screen, you can very clearly see that the player has to go down to get that treasure which is in the X, he still has to figure out the button because it's an implicit tutorial, but it's quite clear. So this, ne this next screen is when the player has to do his uh, first um, gravity switch. It's a very simple one, it's in a controlled environment, just go up and the platform will save you. Um, so he only has to figure out the button. 
uh, next the player has to do some proper platform, uh, experiment platforming upside down. This hole in here is uh, more convincing uh, than an open air to tell the, the player that he will die when reaching the top of the screen. Uh, uh, from now on, the level always has to pass uh, above and below. So uh, we encourage the player to change always uh, to go through the um, through the layer that is uh, more um, comfortable for them. But we have more rewards in the upper part, part uh, to um, convince players to break the convention of soft platformers. Like you can see, you can go up like in Mario One slash Two that you go up and reach the warp zone. Okay, so here's the word when we teach the player to do the, his first um, multi-gravity switch. He got, has to switch up to get the big coin, but if he doesn't switch again, he will fall off the screen. So these two arrows indicate him to go up and down. This screen is full of some information. Uh, this little pig goes up and down your only chance is to kill him from above, but his gravity is reverse. Enemies can switch gravity too, so we are teaching the player that he can kill enemies from above when they are reverse. The next enemy can only be um, avoided uh, if the player um, varies inside the ground and let him know that his only chance to survive. That's why, what we teach him there. And here in this corner, we got um, an inversion of the previous situation. We are teaching the player that when, he, when this enemy jumps, he is below the enemy and he switches gravity, he can kill enemies from below. And here he can just uh, experiment with the multi gravity changes through this layer of course, which is done on top of this. Okay, so that's, that's pretty much the design of the first level of tutorial level that we did for the first version of the game. So, how do you think that players reacted to this version? Do you think players got it? They didn't got it? They didn't get it? They did, did they understand the game? No. It all went wrong. No one understood absolutely anything. It was a disaster. So, we got mostly two kinds of players. Players who do not use the multi-gravity switch, they just uh, switch gravity very slowly and politely, uh, being quiet in specific places, and then the rest of the time they play as it was a normal platformer. Of course, they don't make it very far. Some players just ignore the, the jump button. They spam switching graphs, they spam the gravity switch all the time, and then they get mad when when the anti-spam appears, they think it's a glitch. People get mad at me when they die in the upper part of the screen. They look at me like, oh, why are you doing this to me? So, a um, lot of other things. People ask uh, uh, weird questions uh, that uh, are uh, of common knowledge in platformers, like what are the coins meant to do? Or what's the goal of the game? So, yeah. We have to take it back to the drawing table and build it again. For the second prototype, mm, we decided to make it a, a bit more explicit. We, has, we have a tutorial level where you cannot use the gravity. You learn there the basics with very rough um, panels. So this time we, we have a little tiny bit of it. And uh, in the next level, the player gets the gravity ability and can start experimenting with it. So the tutorial level is like this. Teach how to jump. Teach how to jump higher. Always you get um, the key and the word hold or push. Um, how to borrow, how to bounce some enemies to go higher and can make combos, how to dodge the enemies by burrow. What happened this time? Well, this time it takes people like five. 10 or 15 minutes to learn the game basics, to get to the interesting part. So if they really think it's just another generic platformer, they are run, they don't get to the good stuff. And those who get already got used to play it like it was a normal platformer without gravity switches. 
So yeah, we took it back to the driving table and, and we make a merge between everything that we have learned in different events to show in the game. And um, we built a new uh, first level. This time there is no level zero, the what the gravity from the beginning, which it's like the level, the first level we saw at first, but with some major changes. So first we want a very rough sign that tells you hold the button. You don't know exactly what it does, but uh, it's black on the indent than that uh, push makes a low jump and holding makes a big jump. You can already learn that uh, in the next pillar with this, uh, which is uh, higher. We have an enemy with uh, two coins above it. When the player tries to get uh, the two coins, most of the times he will end up bouncing on the enemy, like uh, it happened in the Mario example. So the player already learns that he can jump on the enemy in this game. In here, there is also the um, tutorial for the Digging. Uh, in case the in case the the player accidentally uh, pushes the gravity button before uh, we teach him, the, the first section section of the level is totally covered in this roof made of leaves. Here, if we when we teach them to push the gravity button to invert the gravity, I had a giant enemy here to up some drama, but it's not very dangerous. The player can figure easily what to do before the enemy gets to him. Also, we are forcing him to do the gravity switch because it's an important thing. He cannot uh, avoid this enemy pretty much in any other way. Well, he can uh, dig, but they never figure that, that uh, so early in the game. So, there's an arrow that tells them to go down again because people was just um, thinking that um, they wouldn't die in the other part of the screen. Uh, these two horseshoes, because uh, we are repeating the, the situation with the enemy with the two horseshoes, so that people is invited to jump on them. This part is very interesting because um, it's not very visible in this image, but here is a a special horseshoe. The player cannot get it by jumping because it's too high, so he's forced to do a gravity switch. If he doesn't do a double gravity switch, he will die in the other part of the screen. But the interesting thing is that this time they won't be mad at me because it's optional. It's up to them to do so, and they will not get frustrated. And that's the screen we get um, a little bit more uh, complicated version of the same thing. Uh, for getting this horseshoe, you have to do like three gravity switches. Uh, it's a more, more risky one, but again, it's optional. Um, this situation has been changed as well. Uh, people didn't understand it, so the first enemy you have to eliminate is simple and easy. But we have to add uh, this um, X before the next enemy to remember people that they have to dig in order to avoid that enemy. And also this other X in here is to invite people to switch gravity to kill the next enemy from below because they weren't doing so before. And this is the last screen, this is the most complicated one because um, people didn't get at all the anti-spam feature. So with this uh, pattern of coins they will try to usually try to spam the gravity to get them all, but it's clear in this situation that um, they will be slowed down when they do so, because there is a lot of free air and also they can, they can compare the movements of the character with the player of points. Also, the floor is going to be filled with enemies like this one, which um, encourages the player to keep switching gravity until the landing is finished. Okay, so we first tried uh, this version in Animecom last week, and now in here. How do you think it worked? Maybe this time we got it, people got it, maybe some things, maybe they didn't. They did it. This is what happened. So yeah, implicit to 
Victoria Flu work and can really change totally the experience of the game. Any questions? showing it somehow, sorry, I'm also in oh, yes. Regis, because the, one of the last thing we implemented was some kind of particles around Regis, so it does uh, circular movements around the character, like um, electrons, so more or less every time you do a gravity switch, you are losing one of these uh, electrons, which are kind of subtle, you know, because we want to mark it, but not like flashy and hitting your eyes. And at the end, as you can see very clearly that uh, you run out of power. And also you have the funny animation of Reggie with his face, like, uh, I don't have any more power. And, yeah. So we try to mark it. So, so to uh, like the um, implicit tutorials, we try to do the same with the markers. So to mark it, but uh, hidden, let's say, subtle. Yeah, it's an implicit marker. <laughs> Is that it? Okay, thank you.